Hi guys, welcome back. As per accounting standard, business should record their transactions before they actually paid or received. This concept is known as your accrual concept. I'm sure if, uh, you must studied these things in your uh, academics. So how it is applicable in day-to-day -day operation or how it is applicable in the business. So as you know, there are two type of recording of transactions are there. One is your cash basis, another one is your accrual basis. Cash basis is applicable for small business where they are only concerned about their uh, whenever they are going to use cash means the bank. So if they have received the funds or they have make the payment, then that time they are going to record the transactions. So basically it is also known as your single entry accounting system. Whereas when you will go for uh, corporates or let's say any company registered, so uh, where accounting standards are applicable, so they are mostly applicable or they are using the accrual basis or they used to do the accounting on the basis of accrual basis. So today in this video, I'm going to explain what is this accrual basis or accrual concept. And we will take one small example and we will understand by using this accrual concept, how SAP is going to solve the problem of business. So let's first understand what is accrual accounting. So accrual accounting follow the matching principle and that ensure that the transaction should be recorded in the same period when it is going to occur. It's not like when you are going to make the payment or collection. It is when it is due, when it is occurred. That time the practical, uh, the accrual concept is applicable. So for example, uh, let's say, you take this example, a company, they are going to pay the salary on 5th of every month. So they are transact actually when they are going to transfer their salary to their employees, that is on the 5th of every month. Whereas the salary is belongs to the previous month. If we'll take the example of current month. So in February, they are going to transfer the salary to their employees, whereas that salary will be the last month salary. That means J January salary. So when actually the January salary will be due, January salary will be due on 31st January. That means in the month end. But they are going to transfer it is on 5th of January. So if we'll go for cash basis, so that time your accounting entry will be recorded on 5th January because that day only they are going to transfer the funds. Whereas if we'll go for accrual concept, then it is in a different way we are going to record. It's not only salary, your interest payable, that also applicable on this because interest is normally we are paying quarterly basis, whereas interest is not one day that is on uh, like although we are going to pay quarterly basis but interest on monthly basis it will be there or due will be on monthly basis so that is known as your accrual concept so instead of actually when we are going to make the payment in, uh, instead of that when actually it is due we are going to record the transaction there is another term is also very often we are uh, going to use or we are using that is provision so if we'll try to understand what is the difference between accrual and provision Accrual, I already explained, accrual is one estimated expense that on certain, uh, like for example, you can take salary, rent, interest, these are your accruals. Whereas provisions as estimated liability with uncertainty. Salary, you know that we have to transfer on this date. R interest, we are going to pay on this date, right? So that is certain and it is uh, like due. Whereas bad debt provision, we, we are going to add some provisions so that if bad debt will be there then we are going to adjust so bad debt provisions or a similar type of any provisions will be there so provision is the basic difference is it is uncertainty so it is estimated liability on uncertainty whereas if it is certain then that time we are going for accrual now let's understand how in accrual or how this accrual is going to handle in the sap system or how sap is going to handle this accrual for that purpose we have different options are there we can go for manual option or we can go for uh, recurring entries in this particular video i am going to show you the manual option and next video i am going to add on the recurring and uh, like you can go for periodic accrual also example when you are going for overhead allocations from the co co um, controlling point of view that time also maybe accrual concept periodic accrual is applicable so it is applicable on both finance as well as on controlling so it's not like only it is applicable so case for example if you are going to execute through ksu5 so that is not fi that is controlling so accrual is always it is applicable in day-to-day -day operations so if we we'll try to understand theoretically, that means uh, as per the previous example, so as company is going to 
uh, pay the salary on 5th every month. So, and as we are going to follow the accrual basis, so this is the first accounting entry will be there in the books of accounts and when it will be there, it will be there on end of January, maybe 31st January this transaction will be there. So if it is a normal transaction, then you are going to record the transaction as if it is a payment, then salary to bank. But in this case, we are not going to on 31st January, we are not going to make the payment to the sub, uh, employees. So in, in this, but on 31st January, the salary is due. So that is why the accounting entry will be salary account is going to due or it is going to debit and outstanding salary or accrued salary payable is going to credit. On this date, salary is due. Maybe we are not paying, but it is due. That is on 31st January, this transaction should be posted next month. But it, when we are going to pay, we are going to pay on 5th January. So on, 5th, uh, on 1st January, we are going to reverse the previous transaction. So in the beginning of February, because I'm taking example of January, so it will be uh, 1st of February, the accrued salary payable is going to debit and salary expense is going to credit. If you are going to prepare a balance sheet for January month, so in that day in January, you will find that outstanding salary is 5000, which is due, but already we have, uh, but we have not paid it. So that is why in balance sheet of January, you will find accrued salary will be there. That is for 5000. Simply you can say 5000 will be outstanding salary that we are going to reverse on it will be automatic in system it will be there so accrued salary is going to be debit which earlier it was credited now it is going to debit and salary expense is going to credit so this is let's say first of february this entry then 5th of january 5th of february this will be your entry so this is your actual transaction so accrued salary is going to payable because in january balance sheet you have one outstanding salary is there so that we are going to pay on 5th february that is salary outstanding salary or accrued salary is going to payable that is 5000 and your bank is going to credit 5000 so this is how the transactions will be recorded here i have taken the example of uh, salary here you can take re uh, rent uh, your uh, interest anything but the concept is same whenever it is going to do accrued entry then reversal then whenever you are going to actually make the ban uh, bank transaction that day you are going to have the actual transactions so let's this check this one in the SAP system. Now I assume that today is 31st January and uh, I'm the person who is going to handle this uh, and it is part of your record to report process or record to report department. So under general ledger accounting, this will be managed. So if I'm the user for that uh, record to report process, so I'm going to post the accrued entry today. So it will be FB S1, the transaction code. And uh, this one I'm going to take 31st January. document it's GL posting so document type accordingly you are going to take let's take this company code as it is Y800 the company code and posting date also I will take 31st January and uh, you can specify under which ledger you are going to post the transaction then you can specify the reversal region so reversal region we will take accrued here accrual deferral means next month we are going to reverse it and you can specify on which date you are going to reverse it so i will take here first february then your debit accounting entry debit so i will take one expenditure let's take this one 3009 continue so amount we will take as per example 5000 i have to take a cost center here because it is expenditure so let's take some cost center HR admin then this will be credit so this will be your outstanding salary so credit outstanding salary I will take here this one accrued salary 5009 continue and complete the entry my document posted now if I will check my accounting entry particularly on 31st January so I will specify the date, maybe other transactions uh, might be there. So better I will specify the date. Now you can see here salary expenditure is posted 5000 as an our uh, expenditure and one outstanding salary is there. So here bank involvement is not there because we have not paid any payment to the employees. So 5000 is accrued salary or outstanding salary. So this balance we will be there current month or January. 
uh, balance it as your outstanding salary now this one we are going to reverse on the first February so we are going to post a reversal entry as I said this is a manual one so everything I am doing here manually but in the next video I am going to show you the automatic process or that is through the accrued engine we can use here right so on 1st February we are going to reverse this entry so that we can proceed with the accrual so if you'll say till now what I did so this with this particular transaction so this ensure that January financial report reflect, reflects your salary expense it is expenditure and even though payment is going to be disbursed in the month of February so now we are going to go for the reversal entries so I will use here transaction code F.18 select the company code you may specify here any uh, particular document number the last document number you can enter uh, but I know that in this particular company code only one accrual transaction is there so I'm just going to see how many accrual entries are there which need to be reversed so let me first run it in the test run execute so here I can see one transaction is there which is uh, document number you can verify with the document number 1003 this is the document so this is our accrual entry and which is supposed to be reversed on 1st of February so I'm not going to do anything simply if everything is okay then I'm going to execute uh, I can remove the test run and I can execute it so accrual posting accrual reversal posting done so after that you will find that this entry will be nullified right so if I will add here month of February let's take this date and execute so you can see here the entry is nullified now we are going to make the payment so with this entry what we did this reversed the accrual entry and it cleared the liability before your actual payment right you can see the books of accounts it is there so as I have not created employees as vendor so that is why I'm not showing you the payment entry but I'm sure you must familiar with the F-53 or F-110 so in that case you will go to F-53 you will select your bank account for payment so here you are going to select your uh, bank for payment and here you are going to select your vendor for the payment so this is how accrual will be managed so it is not that difficult but sometimes in interview uh, you are getting questions how you are going to manage with accrual or what is accrual concept so in this way you can answer the uh, um, this particular question so accrual is nothing but uh, it is recording of a transaction when actually it is due not when actually we are making the payment so that is a very simple concept so next we I, I will show you how we can make it automatic so that is through the recurring process how we can manage